Hello and uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, if you're tuning in for the very first time, allow me to welcome you all to this amazing forum. You're welcome to The Top Farmer Speaks. My name is Manny S. Yen, and we do apologize for the late start. The show starts, of course, every Friday between 4 and 5 p.m. on Zoom. And if you're wondering what The Top Farmer Speaks is all about, allow me to inform you officially the Top Farmer Speaks is an initiative of the, um, the Top Farmer Foundation. And of course, the goal and the aim of the platform, of course, it, it seeks to shed the needed light uh, on the latest developments in the agricultural sector in Nigeria. And we know that sector is ever booming and ever thriving. So pretty much the Top Farmer Speaks is the link between the stakeholders in the industry, uh, and also highlights the vast opportunities in agriculture with a focus on how to break down the government policies, possibly uncover funding and investment opportunities that are there and the prospects, and also to unearth the latest research and technological advancements in the industry, the market potential, the export potential, and to bring the information for growth and sustenance closer to you, the enthusiast, the farmer, uh, you are somebody out there who just wants to know what is happening in Nigeria. Nigeria is big in agriculture in so many ways, but how can I weigh in? How can I know more? How can I interact with the stakeholders? Learn for free. I dare say is entirely for free. So you are welcome wherever you are around the world to the Top Farmer Speaks. And I'm your host, Manny Essien. And it's another week. Last week, we had an, an amazing encounter with an amazing speaker. He is no other than um, Mr. Kolawale Adeniji, a trained mechanical engineer and also a technologist with over 25 years experience in the business. And he is also on Zoom with us again today. He did promise that he'll be back with some more information for free. <laughs> for all of us who are out there on the Zoom platform. So you're welcome, everyone, to the show. Let me just start by also saying to you that um, our topic is different from last week's topic. Our topic this week has to do with the comparative advantages of cassava and the cassava derivatives. That means we're talking about the advantages of cassava as a whole and cassava derivatives. So it's going to be very insightful. We'll be digging into what is the what are the what what are the benefits of cassava as a whole, and how can we jump in on cassava as an agricultural produce? So we have on Zoom with us right now, as always, my Egbon, <laughs> the Oga at the top. Allow me to please. I like to introduce him well because maybe you don't understand the benefit of this platform. Maybe you're you're logging in from America, from Ghana, from Abuja, from uh, Lagos, and you don't know that ah, these people are talking agriculture on Zoom. Ah, are we not supposed to go to the farm? No, that is not the focus. The focus is to network. So we are networking, and Mr. Kolawale Adeniji is here with us today. I did tell you he has 25 years' experience working on diverse agro-allied projects across Nigeria and across Africa as well. He is a prominent stakeholder in the agro-allied machinery and equipment fabrication in Nigeria. That one got my attention. That means he can make things for agriculture, not just plants. He also manufactures as well. And uh, he's a very knowledgeable individual in the field. He is the founder and chairman of Niji Group, comprising of four, four other subsidiaries, namely the Niji Lucas Nigeria Limited, Niji Farms and Allied Services Limited, Niji, Limited, Niji Institute of Sustenance Agriculture and Ripples Hotel and Nightclub in Nigeria, operating in agricultural machinery fabrication, crops and livestock production, food processing center for learning profitable agriculture. You know, it's just vast. If I were you, while we're talking to him, why don't you just Google his name? <laughs> As Nigerians will say, Google it. So when you browse his name, you would understand who he is. He has won several awards, including Century International Quality Era Award, the Gold Category, 
all the way uh, in Geneva, Switzerland in 2015. You are welcome. Good afternoon to you, sir, and nice to meet you again. Um, I don't know if my voice is too loud. Good afternoon, sir. Hello, are you there, sir? Well, I'm sure he's there. He can hear me. And he's also on the platform. You're welcome to the show. So please remember uh, that if you do intend to ask a question, you can also send your questions uh, via the Zoom chat room. And I will see your questions and I will take them one at a time. Okay. But before we go into that closely, let me just play you a video clip so you can understand what the top farmer generally is all about. Let's watch the video. Thank you. Cassava is consumed in many forms in Nigeria. Apart from boiling, frying, or roasting the tubers, its processed form is enjoyed as gari, fufu, lafu, edible starch, and so on. Cassava is also used to produce industrial starch, which is used in several sectors including the food industry, pharmaceuticals, foundry, textiles, paper and adhesives. Other uses of cassava include cassava chips, which are dried cuttings of cassava tubers, used in production of livestock feeds, ethanol, and other products, as well as high-quality cassava flour. Cassava's most illustrious son here in Nigeria definitely is Gary. It needs no advertisement and has been saving lives, as they say, since time immemorial. All the meals made from cassava like fufu, starch, and abacha are also delicacies across the country. Cassava flour is also used by bakers in making bread. No doubt, cassava is a key player in our diet and as such, it deserves all the attention being paid to it. Okay, so I guess that's the video clip in case you're wondering uh, what the show is about. You've seen something about it. And now we are here at the Top Farmer Speaks, which will be, of course, a weekly program every Friday between 4 to 5 p.m. We're here to network and interact with stakeholders in the agricultural sector of the economy and, of course, try to die, you know, to learn more and to share information. So uh, you are welcome, Mr. Kolawale Adeniji. Good afternoon to you, sir. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Nice to have you again. How was the weekend? How was okay. last week? Well, last week was good, and this week is uh, it's also good. Uh, Fantastic. So Fantastic. Nice, uh, nice meeting you once again. Same yeah, here. My name is, is Famakola Adeniji. Last week, I think we talked about uh, the intro to agriculture and some of the benefit of uh, uh, choosing cassava as a, as a crop. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So this week two, so I think uh, we can quickly recap uh, what happened last week, and uh, but I think we've eaten too much in today today's uh, time, so we'll not be able to run into it. But let me quickly start by by the way, cassava and its uh, comparative advantage. So that's what we are going to be discussing about today. So then, uh, what is agriculture? Basically, agriculture is the rearing of uh, animals, boundary, and uh, cultivation of crops. Mm. So that's the, the plus and minus of uh, agriculture is that's two ways. Is it the animals, boundary? You talk about poultry and some other things, and cultivation of crops. So crops can either be a cash crop or food crops. So those are the two uh, major uh, aspects of uh, uh, crops that we have. Then uh, common crops around the uh, here yeah, includes some of the crops we have here yeah, includes uh, uh, tubers, uh, yam cassava, potato, then uh, cocoa and some other palm oil and other ones. Other palm oils are the one that we call cash crop. So we have grains and some other things. So those are the different uh, area of uh, crops that we have. So I want to quickly introduce us to general agriculture before we decide to pick uh, a cassava as uh, one of the uh, golden crops. So then these crops all have their specific and uh, as per land uh, requirements, climate requirement and, uh, and uh, ultimately the use of uh, to which 
they can put to. So cassava as a crop. So that's the topic of today. So we are going to cassava as a crop. So the botanical name for cassava is a manioc esculetus. So, but that's the popular uh, botanical names. All the crops, they have their own botanical uh, names. So the crop types is tuba. So I think we said it. Then the, the soil requirement is a sandy loamy soil. You can actually do well in most of the soil, but uh, the soil requirement is sandy loamy soil. Then when you look at a uh, cassava, this part of the reason why we choose cassava, you don't really need the irrigation system to, to work on cassava. So that's that's one of the key importance of, uh, of cassava. Then uh, uh, some of the uses of cassava, some of the uses of cassava is uh, mainly for, for animal feed. So we use cassava for animal feed, some of the waste uh, products. Then uh, uh, alcoholic uh, beverages, the human nutrition does the uh, consumption for food, like garlic, fufu, a different type of uh, food that we have, that's part of it. Then uh, uh, it's good for addressing like uh, some people making cartons and some other uh, paperwork, they actually use it for addressing. Then uh, both for the sweetener for some uh, industries like uh, beer and some, Beverages too. So they use it for as a suit now. Just to mention a few about it. Then uh, cassava major nutrient uh, composition. So when you look at the major nutrient composition of cassava, at least in, in, in 100 grams, then you find that uh, the, the carbohydrates, which body need is there, the protein is there. The protein is a little bit, a little bit uh, less, but when you compare to what you are using it for the food substance, uh, supplement. You use uh, vegetables and everything to boost the, uh, the, the protein uh, level. So when you talk about the, the, the fiber content is actually used for dairies, then the fats, then the water and some other, other nutrients. Those are the composition of the, the, the nutrient uh, composition in cassava. Then cassava and the economy value. The reason why we, why we decide to go for cassava is because when you talk about uh, most of the crops we have, both in Nigeria and uh, all over the world. Cassava is one of the crops that can actually create a good employment. When you look at uh, the employment creation of cassava is, is actually more higher compared to any other crops. And I will explain. The value chain of cassava employs a lot of uh, skills. So I'll break it down in these forms. You have a starting from when you are doing the land clearing, you have some good of people to do the land clearing, then the land preparation, then the, the, the planting. Under the land preparation, you have the plow, you have the region, you have different uh, aspects of land uh, preparation. Then when you talk about the planting, you have both mechanical planting and manual planting, which actually employs a lot of youth. Then when you are talking about weed management, you need to employ some youth for the weed management. And when you are talking about uh, the harvesting, is, is still need to employ a lot of people for the harvesting. The logistic of cassava, when you are picking it, you are, you are moving it from one level to the other way they go to process, is you still employ a lot of youth and a lot of people along the value chain. That's on the farm mechanization. So when you now look at uh, the processing, you have uh, the wet section and you have the dry section. When you talk of the processing of, uh, of cassava, so cassava has a lot of value chain too. So you, you get cassava starch, you get cassava flour, you get garlic, you get fufu, then you turn it to animal feed. So when you look at the value chain, Ozetel or attracted to cassava is, is like more than even 10 different value chain that you can use cassava for. That's why I say it's one of the golden crops that we can use. And that's the reason why we make it as a reference point. Is a crops, that you can never choose and go uh, and go wrong on it. That's why it's very, very good. When you are talking about irrigation, you do not need to work with any form of irrigation when you look at the return on investment on it. That's why it says drought resistant. So you can plant it and it can survive even four, five, six months of uh, a dry season. So cassava can still 
survive and see some, have something to, to work with. And when you look at cassava, it's one of the crops that you can store, the storage system, you can, you can decide not to harvest cassava for another six months, one year, you can still keep it on the soil if there's a glut in the market. So cassava has it again, that's another comparative advantage. Cassava is one of the crops that you can keep in the soil without harvesting, which is very, very important. So another thing is that when you look at cassava for the FX, that's for the exchange, is having a lot of potential issues, uh, usage, because you can export it as a food crops, you can export it as industrial use, so you can export it as a different uh, area as a, as a starch, is, is gluten-free. When you're talking about uh, the, the flour, and you can use the flour for a lot of things too. Maggi, Maggi can be used for flour, you can use it to bake, you can use it to compare or add a certain percentage with, uh, with uh, uh, wheat flour. So when you look at uh, a lot of things about cassava, is really, really interesting. So with cassava farm and, and processing plants, uh, there's work to be done all year round. What that means is that cassava is one of the crops that you can grow and you can work with cassava from January to December. You can harvest cassava any time, any, any, any month, any day from January to December, but other crops, you cannot do that because when you have a, 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 like a maize, you have a time for maize. After three months, you have to do the harvesting. Either you mechanize or you use a manual harvesting. When you look at yam, you cannot harvest yam around the year. So that means because of the potentiality of harvesting between, uh, for year and that means it's a good uh, uh, job creation. So there's no time you work on cassava that you cannot work on cassava either on the farm or uh, when you're talking about uh, processing. So that's one of the major advantage uh, that, you, that you have on cassava. Then when you look at uh, cassava to every part of cassava is useful from the root to the suit. When you look about the roots, you get a lot of value from it. When you look about the stem, stem is what you plant. And when you look at the leaves too, leaf is good for vegetables. It's a lot of sort of protein, the protein in the leaves is almost, I think, uh, up to 16 to 20 something percent of the uh, uh, protein. It's very, very high in protein. Then when you look at the cassava waste, cassava waste too is, is useful. You can make a lot of money from cassava waste. You can even export cassava, cassava waste. It's good for animal feed, and it's, you call it serve as some bindings. And people are even using ties for ceramic, they can, they can use it, which is actually, good too. So I think uh, when you look at the return on, on the investment on cassava is equally very high. It's one of the crops that you can grow and you can go to bed and sleep. So that's one good thing about cassava. So cassava is very, very good to start with. If you want to start farming and you can actually do your, your calculated risk on cassava because after buying the first uh, stem of cassava to plant, you don't need to reinvest on, on, on seed or buying any other crops or any other seed again. It's the same cassava you can replant again year in, year out. So, which is very, very good. Hardly you can do any other crops like that. That cassava is all part of, the stem is all part of what you are using. It's part of what you can, you can, you can plant. So, I think, uh, I said something about return on investment. When you look at the cost analysis, or how much you spent on cassava farming, and how much you are getting back, even from sales of the of the stems again, is a lot of money. So, I think uh, one or two uh, crops can hardly compare with uh, cassava, but cassava is a is a good crop to to start with because of the uh, multi-purpose uh, uh, use. So, I think uh, thank you. And uh, at this point, I'll go back to my brother. So if there's any uh, question or, or any area, some of the VR believe I've not touched. So I'm actually on ground for them to, to answer. Thank you. Your mood? 
your your yes your your mute. We can't hear you. Thank you very much, uh, 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 sir, for the insight on cassava and cassava derivatives. If I can remember very clearly, I can't remember everything, but I know you mentioned uh, the uh, animal feed, um, um, alcoholic beverages, food, adhesive, sweeteners. You know, this cassava is from Godu because, it, because they, what you've mentioned is it means it is like a wonder farm uh, product you know so people are saying hello if please send a message you know to, through the chat room so we can hear from you um this message is from praise dada who says i'm glad to be here praise you can ask a question free of charge to mr kola wale because if you go to his office the question will change uh, Inka, Id, uh, Idmu says thank you for the very insightful information sir then we have something from uh, amos amos from costain who says which production is more profitable between growing cassava for consumption and growing for industrial use? He's asking you, sir, which is more profitable, uh, growing for consumption? Yes. Uh, growing for industrial use is more, more profitable because when you go for industrial use, you can scale your production and you can have what we call a protection or what the market needs. So based on that one, you make money on volume. But when you grow for consumption, you cannot really uh, say the particular, uh, the market uh, trends on the, the, the consumption. And when you go for consumption, when you have other products coming out like maize, yam, the, 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 the cassava uh, demand comes down because you have some other uh, crops competing for the same uh, 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 consumption. But when you grow for for industrial, then you have to do your protection to know the, the each week and month, and you can spread your production of, and you can actually plan based on that. So the, be, the 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 best thing is for you to grow for uh, for industrial use. So thank you. All right, thank you. Does that answer your question, Amos from Costain? We have um, Olayinka Idumu uh, who says, good afternoon, sir. Every session is nice. Nice to be back again. That means he was back. He was here last week, I think. He says, please, what byproduct can one go into producing with a small budget? What byproduct can one go into producing with a small budget? Uh, you know that in Nigeria, there's nothing like small budgets. Because uh, you have to provide virtually everything. So your your small budget is uh, relative. So it depends on the, what you came to. So you can actually get back to us on your budget. We'll be able to advise you on whether to do a one hectare or two hectares of farming. But we, we've said that uh, there's a minimum acreage of farm you can do before you can score yourself a farmer when it comes to a cassava farm. So, but if you want to add value to it, it depends on the market you are targeting. So before you can say, okay, this is your budget for, for what you are doing. So you can get back to us on the, on the budget you also be able to advise you better, but you can't go wrong working with Kassar. Thank you. Okay, hopefully, I hope that answered your question. And uh, please, maybe you, sir, when you say that they should get back to you, <laughs> I think um, they should get back to the platform to link yeah, to they you. Are really, yes, uh, the top farmers uh, platform, that's right. Please, uh, you can, uh, of course, uh, if you would like to have further counseling or further um, assistance with your budgeting, this pro this uh, platform is here to help you, okay? Just by being interactive with the platform, we can help you. So if you want more insights with how you can plan your investment into cassava, please send an email to info at the top farmer.ng. Okay, that is info at the top farmer.ng. Just include your name and let's be specific about what you want. And it will be sent to Mr. Kolawale Adeniji and he will get back to you via the platform. All right, you have to go to the platform to understand that we are uh, together. And this message, it, we're having so many messages coming in. I don't know, this is, it's, it's, uh, this is your photo. 
you have uh, brought this, <laughs> open the, the floodgates. <laughs> okay, this one is from uh, Olufemi who says, how can we acquire government land for farming? He's asking, sir, how can we acquire government land for uh, farming? Uh, a lot of government are given lands, but uh, depends on the, the locations you want to. And uh, if I thought you want to acquire government land, you need to know the states you are working with. And the best thing is to go to the Ministry of Agri uh, to go and find out about uh, the land they have for cassava. You know, they have land for different uh, uh, crops, but there's a particular one for cassava that you can you can work with. If you just get to the Ministry of Agri, then they'll be able to tell you. Be, uh, it depends on the states you want to you want to farm. I think is. And a lot of people are actually giving a uh, land to when it comes to cassava, but just get back to the to the top farmers there. Uh, so we'll be able to advise you better on what to do. So thank you. But um, in a, in summary, sir, it is possible. It's possible. It's possible. The government are giving land. They are even the one in your state that they are giving, I think close to almost 1,000 youths. They want to. They want to give them land and give them some support. So if you if you go to your state and find out about uh, their youth uh, youth in agriculture, they'll be able to give you what to do and even give you the market the mother support you need. Thank you. Some people, some people will be wondering, ah, is this Nigeria? Is this really happening in Nigeria? You know, Nigeria, yes. everything is just negative. So this thing is happening. They are actually giving the land and assistance. Yes, yes. Okay, you heard it not from me, you heard it from Baba at the top. So uh, go and make a move to know more about it. Uh, this one is from uh, Adejo, who is from VI. And Adejo says, um, how do we address the problem of low yield and low starch content in cassava production? So he's attacking a problem of low yield and low starch content in cassava production. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. That's a good, a very good question. So the, the low yield uh, depends on the planting population and the, and the people. I think there's an interference in the, in the, okay. So low yield depends on the, on your planting population. So, Normally, uh, in one hectare of land, you need to maintain like a minimum of almost uh, 12,000 stands. So once you do 12,000 stands and uh, you prepare your land well and, the, and uh, there's no missing stand, there's nothing stopping you from not getting good yield from even 30, 25, 30, 35 pounds per hectare on that, uh, on that aspect. So, about the issue of low yield, you don't really have, it's only because you have find a lot of missing stand on the farm that you don't even take note of. But if you can maintain up to even, let's say you maintain up to 12,000 stand on the farm, and let's say per each of your stand, you have almost a three kg, three kg on per stand, three kg multiplied by 12,000. That means you're having like almost 30, uh, 36 tons alone. And you see how some cassava that you can get up to five kg, 10 kg, Let's just say, average, you, you have like almost a, almost a, a three kg. That's it. Then regarding the low, low, uh, low start uh, uh, content, uh, low start content or even dry matter content. So it depends on the time you harvest your cassava. If you harvest your cassava during the dry season, then the start content is going to be high. Then it depends on the variety of cassava. Which variety of cassava are you growing? Is it TME419, is it CC32, or is it So it depends on the variety of cassava. The uh, IIT and the root and tuba modica, they've been able to release a lot of different uh, cassava varieties into the market. Then the cassava, the choice of cassava depends on the, the starch content you are looking at. For. So, but if you have a during the rainy season or during the beginning of the rainy season, your start content to be very, very low. But when you harvest towards uh, when the rain is stabilized, then the dry matter content becomes a little bit higher. And when you now do your harvesting in the rice season, 
so your start content is high. So that's just it. So thank you. Thank you very much, sir. It's a, uh, we carry on with the questioning. Uh, there are some more questions here. Let me just take a look at one or two from people who are sending in their questions. Uh, this question is from um, is from Olayinka. He's also asking another question. He says, with cassava having so many uses, how can small scale farmers be educated on converting cassava produce to byproducts that are export worthy in a way that would make them financially, you know, stable, you know, converting cassava produce, you know, to byproducts. I don't know if you are, uh, that question is. Uh, uh, normally we ask people that if you don't have markets, don't plant. If you don't have markets, you can't process or buy. So that's, that's one thing is, uh, brings us back to a kind of a, you need to plan from the market to uh, the factory. So that's demand driven. So you need to work on the market. Which market do you want? Is it garlic? Is it for food? Is it starch? Is it flour? Or is it for animal? Food? Not determine the kind of investments you want to do or you are investing in. Then when you are investing, you can invest in a, a, a waste session or dress session or what we call pre-processing or farm gate processing. So people can do the farm gate and do the finishing. You can actually invest in the packaging if you have the source, but there's something we call traceability. For anybody who that wants to go into export a, a, a production, mm -hmm. so there's what we call traceability. You must be able to trace your product from the farm to the processing, then down to the market. Because people want to pick your product and know the genesis of your product, where your product comes from, and what does it, how did they process, and what are the what are the if there's any value addition that you're able to have any preservation people you want to do, or you control your your storage through the moisture content or through the drain. Or, so, so a lot of people really want to know. So it depends on the market you are targeting that determine the kind of investment that we can advise you to do. But all still boils down that you have to get back to the platform if you have any important thing so we can treat it and get back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So once again, you can send your email uh, to info at the top ng for more information. This one is from uh, um, Olaru Bosu, uh, who says that, where is the largest concentration of cassava farms in Nigeria? Where someone can get cassava peels for animal feed production? Where is the largest concentration of cassava farms in Nigeria? Where someone can get cassava peels for animal feed production? This is a farmer. I'm sure it's uh, very easy to talk from. Oh. Uh, uh, thank you. You, you know, maybe he, he, he's trying to put the cats uh, in front of the in front of the house. So normally it's supposed to ask where is the processors. So it's only when they process that you can get the cassava peels. So you can't get from the farmer. So when you have the uh, the the processor, I think you can get some of the large processor around the or your majorly or your states, when you go to different part of or your either is any other or your town at Tiba, then you can see a lot of trucks, trucks look on cassava coming. Then uh, you can get a lot of people processing around that area. So when you get to Yuri, Yuri can actually tell you how to don't on it and they can tell you where to get a lot of cassava peas. But cassava peas is everywhere. Then depends on the kind of cassava peas you are getting. Are you getting the wet one? Are you getting the kick or you are getting the dry? So all those things depends on what type of cassava uh, peels you are getting. Is it the kick? Is it the peels or the wet or the dry? So all those things, all those questions are what you need to answer. And so we get back to the top farmer and do all those things. So we have all the details on where that is done how to go about it. So thank you. Okay, sir. My name is Praise Olua Dunsing. Okay. And uh, I'm based in Akure, so I want to ask that I'm interested in joining, uh, what's it called, any existing agricultural body here in Akure. So I don't know if possible I can be 
linked or hooked up with one? Mm, normally, apart from Feka, that uh, in Akure, I don't think, uh, I don't know any other body in Akure that, uh, that are into serious, but you can get back to the platform. So we'll help you to find out. So body you can talk to in Akure so to be able to to be able to help you with some of the information. So I think uh, that's okay. What okay, sorry, we, we apologize for the uh, communication, uh, but I guess we are all back on. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. Now. Yeah. Oh yes. Uh, network can be can be funny sometimes. <laughs> all right. So um, let me just take a few more questions, and uh, we can begin to um, slowly descend and wrap it up. Uh, don't forget, you can please send your questions to info at the topfarmer.ng. We have a question from uh, Halimat from Ibadan for you, sir. Um, okay. Apart from growing cassava, which of the value chain gives the highest return on investment? I think you've answered that question. No, you no, haven't. The, no, no, I haven't. The value chain, yes. I give, oh, yes. yeah, yes. Uh, when you look at the value chain, like you uh, talk of starch, talk of flour, fufu, Gary, when you talk of chips, because of the cost of drying of chips, so it doesn't really give a lot of return on the investment. But the one you can work with more is a starch and flour, but others won't require a lot of investment, big investment because of the because of the industrial use. And if you don't invest up to a certain level, they will not buy from you. So that's number one. Then the other one you can go into is for is for is simple to, so that's it. So. Okay, and this question is from David. David is from uh, Osapa. Okay, David says, sir, last week you talked about marketing and getting off takers before production. How can we get off takers for our product before producing? Uh, that's why you say you need to make an informed start. For any business you want to do, you must have done some studies on it and know who is using the products and you have to talk to the end user. So those are your optical to so make sure that if you don't, you must know the price you are selling, know your cost of investment and know your profit before you go into it. But if you don't have an optical and you go into it and after this, uh, the maturity of your uh, crops and you don't, have a, you don't have markets, so it's back to square one. So the opticals or cassava, uh, a product are uh, almost everywhere. You have a lot of people at the factory for starch, for, for flour, for fufu. A lot of people are there looking for who will grow cassava for them. So just send us an email so we'll be able to link you. That's the reason why the top farmer is so linking the, the farmers to the, to the opticals and actually look at some of the uh, teaching problem associated with the farming so they'll be able to sort them out for you. So we'll be able to source for the optical for you. Just get back to us on the platform, send an email to the platform so we'll be able to help you out. So thank you. All right, so um, you can see that this interactive session, there's a lot of work that you, the, um, the viewer needs to do. You need to get back. Otherwise we will, um, Mr. Kola Wale will be disappointed. So a lot of getting back is important. So as you're asking these questions, if you do not get back, I will equally be disappointed. So please send us an email. All right, let us, it's a process eh? uh, at info at the top farmer.ng. We want to help you. All right, we're not just here to answer questions. We want to help you prefer solutions to whatever you are encountering and also learn as well. Just two more questions and we will wrap it up the session for today. And it will be bye-bye for now. But for now, let's take some more questions. Um, I'm looking at this message that just came in. Let's look at the message again. Um, this message is from Soliu Hamza. Soliu is on the platform right now. And Soliu says, do you think cassava farming is competitive in Nigeria, especially as most farmers do rain-fed farming? Oh. Do you think cassava farming is competitive in Nigeria, especially as most farmers do rain-fed farming? Over to you, sir. Yeah. 
Thank you. You know, I said this earlier that uh, cassava is one of the crops that you can you can plant. You don't need irrigation to grow it. So that's the more reason why it's one of the best uh, crop. You can still without rain for four or five months, the cassava, cassava will still survive. So that's why it's the one that is more competitive when you talk about uh, the competitiveness in, uh, in crops and some other things. So you don't need the uh, irrigation for cassava, for cassava farming because cassava stay up to almost uh, 12 months. So before you have it, so you don't need uh, irrigation to grow cassava. So even you can even grow cassava with the last rain in the, in the, in December or any part. So if the last rain, cassava will still survive throughout the rain uh, crisis. So you can't go wrong by choosing cassava. And uh, if you prepare your land very well, then cassava is still the best. Thank you. Okay. I have one question of my own, and I'll take one more and wrap it up, if you don't mind, sir. <laughs> My question is, I mean, we're not the only country in Africa or in the world that grows cassava. If I'm wrong, I don't know if I'm wrong. We're yeah. not the only country. Um, yeah. Do we have a comparative advantage over these countries? Uh, what, what is our strength? Uh, we have a lot of comparative advantage over these uh, other countries. Firstly, the, the research... Uh, well, we are not the biggest producer. We are, we are, we are the biggest producer. I, I've walked around all the, all the other countries. I've been to most of the countries that grow cassava, and we've actually assisted some of the other countries in setting up the farm, the processing, and we've visited their farms. I look at the way they have been, and I've, I've received a lot of people all over the world on my farm. I know the comments, they are all passed in order to say the recommendation they give to the system they saw on the farm. That's number one. Then another advantage was that we have uh, some of the best uh, research uh, uh, institute that work on cassava in Nigeria. IT is where it's an international uh, institute that work on cassava. Then Umudike is there. Then we have a uh, root and tuba. We have a lot of them that works on cassava. That's why we have a lot of advantage. Like some people are making, I think from Guinea Conakry, they are making requests to buy cassava stem from Nigeria to Guinea Conakry. So I know some people from uh, Congo Brazzaville, they came to buy cassava stems from here through, uh, they have to ship it by, by, by air. So I know a lot of different uh, countries, even the Togo, they don't have the variety of cassava we have. So when you talk of, we have over 50 to almost 60 or even 70 different varieties of, of cassava in Nigeria. Only you can get that one. And the only country you can get it in is Brazil. Brazil and Nigeria, we have similarity in the area of uh, climate and which, which work for us. And that's the more reason why we are good to go. So in all honesty, when you, when you think about comparative advantage, I think we are, we, are, we are well positioned in Nigeria. And when you look at our land, I don't think there are those states that uh, cassava is not doing well. So, but the yeast may be different, but uh, a lot of people are still growing cassava in all Nigerian states. So we have a lot of competitive advantage and we've really gone far when you talk of cassava, even in Africa and even other parts of the world. The respect, uh, the respect is there for, for Nigeria when it talks about the cassava generally. So thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, well, this will be the final question. Then we can wrap it up. Uh, Chris, who says, Chris says, um, I'm sorry, please, you should indicate which part of Nigeria you're messaging from so we can at least uh, give you a proper acknowledgement. Chris says, uh, sir, I am not interested in farming, but in the business aspect of it, because from you or from your teaching of the business, it looks very profitable. Which area of the value chain can I easily go into? Thank you. Yeah, if you're not interested in farming, but you can you can market the product or you can or can or you can do packaging. So either you package the product or you can if you have interest in driving, the logistic is still a good aspect of it. But I think packaging is good. So if you can you can mop up and package and do the grading, the quality you want, 
and trace it from the farm to if you don't want to process. So processing is there, packaging is there, the marketing is there. So depends on which one and the market you are looking at. So it's good. So you may not actually go into farming aspect of it, but you may do a kind of a value addition, which is good. So any which one you want to do, get back to us. They'll be able to advise you better on uh, the area, depends on your budget and depends on the, the area you are, yeah, yes, you are calling from or you want to work. So those are the things that really matters. Thank you. On that note, we wrap up the question and answer session for this week's edition of the Top Farmer Speaks. Remember, it's every week between 4 to 5 p.m. A very big thank you to our guest speaker, Mr. Kolawale Adeniji. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for sharing this free knowledge to the rest of Nigeria and the world. We cannot thank you enough. And we shall continue again next week, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Bye. Okay. A big shout out. Yes, a big shout out to everybody else who has been on the platform for today. Um, um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, Ken Oji, Soliu Hamzat, we see you. Thank you as well to Olufemi. Thank you to Olaigbe. Thank you to um, Roberts. Thank you to Praise Dada. Thank you to Chris Wealth, Omo Boyowa as well. Thank you to Olayinka Idumu. Thank you to Dr. Abi Adigun and Nelson Ayedu. Thank you to uh, Ebenezer as well as thank you to Oyeni, uh, Oyeni Samuel, forgive me, and also Olayinka Idumu as well. Everybody else online who is watching around the world, if you couldn't uh, of course send your message or your question today, next week Friday, you have another opportunity. We shall be revealing the topic online on Facebook, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. If I were you, go to our platform at The Top Farmer on Instagram to know about next week's topic. I'm your host, Manny Estien. As I always say, plant wisely because the harvest is indeed plenty. Yes. All right. On that note, we shall wrap up today's edition of the show. Thank you for tuning into the Top Farmer Speaks. And uh, leave your comments and email as well to info at the topfarmer.ng. Info at the topfarmer.ng. Until next week, is have a great weekend and enjoy the next video clip about the top farmer. Bye for now. Cassava is consumed in many forms in Nigeria. Apart from boiling, frying, or roasting the tubers, its processed form is enjoyed as gari, fufu, lafu, edible starch, and so on. Cassava is also used to produce industrial starch, which is used in several sectors including the food industry, pharmaceuticals, foundry, textiles, paper and adhesives. Other uses of cassava include cassava chips, which are dried cuttings of cassava tubers used in production of livestock feeds, ethanol and other products as well as high quality cassava flour. Cassava's most illustrious son here in Nigeria definitely is Gary. It needs no advertisement and has been saving lives, as they say, since time immemorial. Other meals made from cassava like fufu, starch, and abacha are also delicacies across the country. Cassava flour is also used by bakers in making bread. No doubt, cassava is a key player in our diet and as such, it deserves all the attention being paid to it.